the Lord be with you a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up the mountain to pray as he prayed the aspect of his face was changed and his clothes became brilliant as lightning suddenly there were two men talking to him they were Moses and Elijah appearing in glory and they were speaking of his passing which he was to accomplish in Jerusalem Peter and his companions were heavy with sleep but they kept awake and saw his glory and the two men standing with him as these were leaving him Peter said to Jesus master it is wonderful for us to be here so let us make three tents one for you one for Moses and one for Elijah he did not know what he was saying as he spoke a cloud came and covered them with shadow and when they went into the cloud the disciples were afraid and a voice came from the cloud saying this is my son the beloved listen to him and after the voice had spoken Jesus was found alone the disciples kept silence and at that time told no one what they had seen the gospel of the Lord
son, my only son. Listen to him and you will live. I say all who live on a burden, come on to him and find your rest. Lead questions for today. If you listen carefully to the second reading, there was a statement made by St. Paul, Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. He says, There are among you enemies of the cross who are proud of things they ought to be ashamed of. Very terrible thing to be said about. Paul speaks of enemies of the cross who are what? Proud of things they ought to be ashamed of. Now, the question is, is it possible for a Christian to fall into this category? By what kind of behavior? To fall into the category St. Paul calls enemies of the cross. Question two. What is the significance of the transfiguration event in the life of Christ and his disciples? Question 3. Why is the transfiguration event being highlighted during Lent? This is second Sunday of Lent. Why are we taking the reading of the transfiguration? The feast of transfiguration as you know is August 6. So why are we taking the gospel of the transfiguration during Lent? What is it meant to achieve in us believers today? Why did the church put that reading during Lent? Every reading of every day in Lent is well selected. Why is the transfiguration put there? There's a hand there on the, my left. I want to attend to question number one. That said, is it possible for a Christian to live to fall into this category okay to fall into the categories it's possible a christian that still live a life of fornication adultery stealing lying by biting is an enemy of christ wow wow that one we cannot clap hand have we? <laughs> no, if we clap hand it is serious now a Christian that is living by lying, by cheating, by fornication, by adultery is an enemy of the cross. That's a very strong statement. And you know the, what the implication is? That such people have no hand in the kingdom of God. No place. That's what St. Paul says. Very strong. That's why I said to clap hand for that one. No, it's very... A round of applause. Yes, next. Glory to Jesus. I want to attempt the question number two. What is the significance of the transfiguration of the event of, Speak the louder. of Christ and his disciples? I think the, the importance there is, uh, is telling us about uh, Moses, uh, Moses, Elijah, and Jesus on the mountain. And then, in, in in significance to that, I think he's talking about Moses being the law maker, and uh, Elijah being the prophet, and Jesus being our new uh, testament. We're talking about today. So I think the translation there is trying to. So what is the significance of that for Jesus in the life of Jesus and in the life of the disciples? You have not touched the question actually. You've just described it. You have not touched the question. Okay. Let somebody help you, right? Yeah. Uh, give him a small round of applause. <laughs> yes, there's somebody right at the back. Okay, after her, there's somebody right at the back. Glory to Jesus. That question number two. 
I think the significance is Christ. Elijah st uh, stands for prophecy, and uh, Moses stands as for the law. Give law. Christ is the fulfillment of the prophecy and the law. And another thing is that it revealed to the apostles who Christ is really is. Because as at this moment, I'm not sure that they really know whom they are moving with as their master. So the transfiguration revealed to them who their master is. That's for the disciples. For the disciples. What is the significance for Jesus? For Jesus, I think the father still tells him that he is with him. The voice of father saying, this is my beloved son, is assurance. Assurance. A round of applause. That's the word. Assurance. Yes, at the back. I want to attempt uh, question three. Why is the transfiguration being highlighted during Lent? What is the significance? What is it meant to achieve? Uh, I think the church wants to let us know that uh, there's glory after the suffering. We should persevere, persevere in our in our Lenten efforts, because it will not be in vain. At the end of it, we shall share in the glory of Christ. So those who are doing white fast should be persevere. Those who are doing dry fast should persevere, because at the end of it, there will be glory. Yeah. A round of applause for him. Okay, we move on. The covenant with Abraham. God made a covenant of fidelity with Abraham. Abraham did not understand all that God said, but he trusted and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. The covenant was renewed with Isaac and Jacob and subsequent generations of God's people. The covenant made with Abraham. Through Moses, God ratified this covenant with the giving of the law on Mount Sinai. The covenant was renewed again and again with David with David, 2 Samuel chapter 7, and God constantly sent prophets like Elijah. Elijah is the first of the prophets, and God sent more prophets like that to warn the people against violating the terms of the covenant and to show them the way of covenant fidelity, how to be faithful to God's covenant. That's the role of the prophets, to warn people about uh, the consequences of violating the covenant, to show people how to be faithful to the covenant. The role of Moses was to ratify the covenant and to give the law on Mount Sinai. Abraham's faith in God was complete. His trust in God was absolute. His submission to God was total. His obedience was unqualified. And when his faith was tested, Abraham did not fail. He passed the test of faith. He was prepared to offer his only son Isaac in burnt offering to God. Genesis chapter 22. And God credited all this for him in his account as righteousness. Christ's glory revealed this is the message of transfiguration the revelation of the glory of christ the event of the transfiguration is set on jesus's journey to jerusalem what was jesus going to do in jerusalem to not just die to be rejected to be betrayed to suffer and to die so he was going to jerusalem to face a major adversity and a series of negative events that will culminate in his shameful death on the cross. Now, while on the way, of course, uh, it was not a very pleasant journey. It was a difficult one. So Jesus took out time to go on top of the mountain. He had earlier been in Galilee, preaching and teaching and performing miracles. He gained popularity, but had also... He had made some enemies among the religious authorities. Now he was on the way to a city where he will be rejected, where he will be condemned, where he will be tortured, where he will be crucified. He would naturally recoil at such a fate. No, nobody likes this kind of fate. Nobody will go and face death like that and not be worried and not be afraid and not be scared. Yet, he was committed to doing his father's will and he was determined to go to Jerusalem. You remember, Peter told him, no, you are not going. You are not going to Jerusalem. After Peter had revealed that you are the Christ, son of the living God, and he says, let's go to Jerusalem. 
and that the son of man is going to suffer and to die what did peter do no 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 you can't go there until he said get behind me satan now on their way he went up a high mountain taking with him peter and james and john he went there to reflect and to pray over the adversity that was soon to follow he went up one can you read with me those who can read to seek the face of the loving father two to find encouragement and support three to obtain strength for the journey he went to seek the face of the loving father to find encouragement and support and please take note of that when you have to face your own suffering and pain to remember to go on top of the mountain to seek the face of the loving father to find encouragement and support and to obtain strength for the journey strength for the journey that's a very familiar expression you know we call the eucharist food for the journey food for the journey the, the eucharist food to take us through the difficult terrain of our journey as jesus prayed on the mountain he had a marvelous experience what happened he was transfigured his face shone like the light his clothes became dazzlingly white there appeared with him two personalities moses and elijah then the voice of the father was heard this is my son the beloved listen to him it was a most gracious glorious moment for the disciples they were mesmerized they were confounded they were perplexed the event was beyond description they were just thrown overboard all that peter could say was ha ah, master it is wonderful it is just wonderful to be here let us make three tens one for you one for elijah one for moses let us be here we're not going downhill anymore this is heaven nobody tastes heaven and goes back to the world and jesus christ said, let go down and this one is just a little taste moses and elijah moses they, they represent the law and the prophets they are the two most respected personalities in the old testament moses and elijah moses gave the law elijah was the king of the prophets <coughs> their presence the presence of moses and elijah at the occasion of the transfiguration links what the old testament to the new the old covenant to the new their presence proves that in jesus the law and the prophets find their fulfillment their presence confirms the authority of jesus that indeed jesus is the one who is in charge he is the son of god he is the one that abraham was praying to come from him he is the one that moses looked forward to he is the one that david looked forward to he is the one that elijah and everybody preached about that's the one that's why moses and elijah were present the transfiguration was a moment of profound encounter with god when the spirit the holy spirit exploded with brilliance on jesus when jesus had a rare glimpse of god's face when heaven broke through to earth when a cord of indescribable joy was touched when jesus felt deeply the love of god yes when jesus heard clearly the voice of god you see when people are going through pain going through difficulties there's often the temptation my lord my lord why have you abandoned me where are you on this occasion on the mountain jesus felt god's presence in a powerful way jesus heard god's voice very powerfully you are my beloved son i am with you even though you are going to face this i am with you you are my beloved son the assurance he got gave him strength to face the grim future the future that is coming in jerusalem the hour of light was meant to help him face the hour of darkness which which one is the hour of darkness hmm? the hour on mount calvary 
we are told that at three o'clock on good friday everything went dark the hour of pain the hour of suffering the hour of rejection the hour of death is the hour of darkness but on this day on mount tabor mount of transfiguration jesus got such a powerful light that is strong enough to accompany him through the hour of darkness now memories of the event the event of transfiguration memories of that powerful event sustained jesus through the harsh and cruel moments of betrayal and rejection condemnation and abandonment crucifixion and death at calvary what about the disciples what was the transfiguration for them the transfiguration was a major revelation and inspiration for the disciples the event was meant to reveal the glorious face of jesus to them jesus has many faces jesus has the face of the compassionate one but in the temple in jerusalem when he met people selling things in the temple what did he do it was another kind of face isn't it it was a harsh face the disciplinarian then jesus has the face of suffering and that is why we read in the stations of the cross our little booklet we use for stations of the cross we normally read from isaiah chapter 53 it says his face was nothing to be attracted to he had no comeliness no beauty to attract anyone why because it was a face of suffering the suffering servant is the suffering face also the face of jesus somebody is shaking hands is shaking head that is not the face of jesus you see that's the problem the problem is that we like the glorious face we don't like the suffering face but jesus is the suffering servant isn't it as well as the glorious lord is also the suffering servant on this occasion the glorious lord the face of the glorious lord was revealed to the disciples now this event was meant to confirm the course jesus had taken he had taken a course to go to jerusalem to face his suffering this event confirms that he had taken the right decision this event also was meant to strengthen the disciples for the scandal of the cross you know one of the perhaps one of the uh, refrains i have always made in this church constantly is this whole question of it is not my lot the nigerian christian approach to suffering is that it is not my lot because suffering is a scandal the cross is a scandal yet saint paul says the foolishness of the cross is wiser than human wisdom but as we sit down here there are still many people who say it is not my lord many times when i finish preaching this thing about the cross somebody accosts me outside and say father that one i own me i know they take any cross for my life do you believe that people do that to me after i finish he say father if you want to suffer that one i own me i no go suffer because i be christian meaning that consistently many nigerians are rejecting the cross consistently they are saying i don't have a path there i will not suffer. but you know what whether you say it or you don't say it at some point in your life there is suffering so it is not about what you say from your mouth it is about the reality the reality is that at some point in your life you will face some suffering you better accept that suffering exists and seek the grace to be able to overcome the suffering now the fragile faith of the disciples will soon be shaken be tested be tried before then the lord uses the transfiguration event to reveal to them that jesus is both what the glorious son of god and also the suffering servant now with the transfiguration the disciples got a glimpse of the glory of the risen lord can you imagine what it means these simple people peter james and john taken on top of the mountain and all of a sudden all of a sudden was what they saw was jesus christ became light jesus christ that they were eating apple with yesterday they are on top of the mountain and jesus christ became pure light hey, hey peter said hey, wonderful wonderful let us be three tens. and they said he did not know what to say he was so filled with joy with delight he didn't know what to say and this was a powerful it made a powerful impact on them because they saw themselves reflected in the image of jesus's transformed self you know if you are going around with your, with your master and your master is glorified i mean at least you go be personal assistant now abby 
I mean, and you know that personal assistants, so, uh, someday they will be in the same kind of position as their master. Is that not how we do it in Nigeria? Ah, uh -uh. So, when they saw what happened to Jesus, they saw their own potential, what they could become. Can you imagine that Peter saw Jesus become light and Peter looked at himself and said, even me one day, I feel be like the wonderful. Now, so they saw themselves reflected in the image of Jesus' transformed self, meaning that they had potential. From this experience, they knew that they had a lot of potential that they could become much more than they are that they could do much more than anyone in the world expected of them yet they didn't quite understand all they saw they didn't understand until after jesus had risen from the dead now our own experiencing of transfiguration experiencing our own transfiguration life for many of us could be hard sometimes in fact for all of us at one point or the other life could be hard didn't i quote here sometimes um the the lines of uh, thomas hardy the author of the mayor of casterbridge who says that moments of joy in this world are only interludes in life's general drama of pain moments of joy are only interludes in life's general drama of pain Thomas Hardy says. And Thomas Hardy in many cases is right. Because in this world oh, you can't have unending joy. It is not possible in this world. St. Augustine says that the Lord has created us for himself and our hearts are restless until they rest in him. If you are in this in this place of exile and you think that you will have bliss, total bliss, it is not possible. Jim Reeves says, this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. The treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blues. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. And if heaven is not my home, then Lord, what shall I do? The angels beckon me from heaven and I can feel at home in this world anymore I have a loving mother somewhere in glory land and I don't expect to stop until I shake her hand she's waiting now for me at heaven's open door and I can feel at home in this world anymore oh Lord you know I have no friend like you and if heaven is not my home, then Lord, what shall I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. <laughs> yes, people who have reflected on the challenges of this world know that we have no lasting homeland in this world. In this world we face, we could face poverty, we could face failure in business, we could face failure in career, we could face loneliness, we could face rejection, we could face persecution, we could face unfair judgment. People can judge, judge us very wrongly. We could face humiliation, we could face condemnation, problem marriage, problem children, sickness or pain. Is there any of us that is immune from all this? some point in time we could face one or the other of this we could face bereavement anything now when we are faced with any of this at such times you know what today's message challenges us to do at such times today's message challenges us to go up to the mountain go up to the mountain to reflect and to pray at such times go up to the mountain to see the larger picture don't just concentrate on the problem you are having see the larger picture go up to the mountain to seek the face of god and get some assurance yes go up to the mountain and receive the light of hope in the midst of that darkness whether the darkness be your picking where they trouble you or your darkness be your husband where they trouble you or be your wife where they trouble you whatever the darkness may be go up to the mountain and receive the light of hope now go up to the mountain and listen and hear those consoling words of the father what does it say you are my beloved son you are my beloved daughter my prayer is that all those of us who are going through any of this kind of things any of this that today 
we will hear those words of assurance deep in our hearts we are citizens of heaven <clears throat> we don't belong here St. Paul says we are citizens of heaven our homeland is heaven so what Peter and his companions experienced on the mountain which overwhelmed and perplexed them we too can experience Happy Beko. we too can experience we can experience the beauty of heaven even if it for only one brief moment we can experience the wonder of heaven even if it for one split second we can experience the splendor of heaven the brilliance of heaven and i tell you the truth you and i you need moments if there is any of you who has never experienced the beauty of heaven in prayer or in some form where for one brief moment you saw the light of heaven i ask you to daily kneel down and pray lord show me your face because to have this kind of experience they had on mount tabor is capable of sustaining you the rest of your life peter never forgot that experience it strengthened him through the most difficult periods in his life he recognized that there was this day that i saw the brilliance of heaven if that is what is awaiting me i will try whatever problems i have i will make an effort if that is what is awaiting me because peter will not exchange that wonderful beautiful brilliant moment he will not exchange it for anything he has seen it i ask you those of you who go to chief odife and others who read internet go to internet and do research please go and read i have been to the mountain top by martin luther king jr the last speech of martin luther king jr is titled i have been to the mountain top april 1968 he delivered it the next day he was killed and what he was saying is that i have been to the mountain top i have seen the light i have seen beyond the mountain i can no longer behave like people who have not seen anything do, do you understand that i cannot behave violence for violence like the enemies they have not been to the mountain i have been to the mountain my behavior has to be in accordance with somebody who has been to the mountain now peter and co who have seen the beauty the wonder the splendor the brilliance of heaven and who know that that is their inheritance and for whom that is their heart's desire it moder moderates every other thing that they do in their life my prayer for you is that may the lord at some point in your life take you to the mountain top while you are still here take you to the mountain top expose this brilliance for you so that when you come here your behavior will be more moderated modified by the mountain experience amen this is our inheritance this beauty this wonder this splendor this brilliance is our inheritance because we are created in god's image because we have been redeemed by christ because we are part of the beauty the body of christ by baptism because we partake in the eucharist heaven is our inheritance can we say that together give me kissy see <clears throat> i want to go to heaven to sing with the angels to shout with the saints in the presence of god i want to go to heaven to sing with the angels to shout with the saints in the presence of god heaven 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 is my home heaven heaven my place of glory heaven 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 is my home i want to be the presence of the lord heaven 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 is my home heaven 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 is my home heaven heaven my place of glory heaven 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 is my home i want to live in the presence of the lord heaven, heaven, heaven is my home i want to sing with the angels in heaven 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 is my home i want to dance in the company of the saints heaven 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 is my home march with the saints in heaven 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 is my home i want to go to heaven to 
singing with the angels to shout with the saints in the presence of God. I'm to go to heaven to sing with the angels to shout with the saints in the presence of God. So, sisters and brothers, heaven is our inheritance. We are heirs of heaven. We deserve to go to heaven because we were created in the image of God because Christ has redeemed us with his precious blood. Because we are baptized into Christ because we share in his body and in the other sacrament. Therefore, heaven is our inheritance. It's our home. Just like Peter and his companions, we too can experience rare moments of pure delight. How many of you know what is called pure delight or can describe it? Pure delight. Now, I can describe it rather than define it. Delight is a moment of bliss, of exceptional bliss and happiness and joy. The kind of experience that you call heaven. Now, in my own little experience, I have seen something that is analogous to that experience among us human beings. How many of you teach in Norway school? If you don't teach in Norway school and you have been occasionally at Norway school to look at children, five, six, seven years old, when the bell goes for recess, what happens in a Norway school when the bell goes for recess? At 10 a.m. and the bell goes for recess, what happens? It's pure delight. Hey, and there is so much joy. The joy cannot be described. The joy in the children at 10 a.m. when the bell goes for recess. And they run up and down the whole compound. That is pure delight. It is possible for children. But sir, it's not possible for you in this world. You know why? When the bell goes for recess, you are thinking of other problems. So you can't enjoy this brief moment of bliss the way the children can. The one way just fight with a husband for house. When the bell goes, he says, oh, the day is already going, so I'm soon going to return to that house. So you can't experience the joy that the children have, the, the bliss that the children have at five. Now, when the bell goes, the teacher, who has been teaching and who needs some rest, the teacher is not having all that delight because the teacher is thinking that I have food for today and tomorrow. What about next tomorrow that I don't have food at home? What do I do? So the teacher is thinking of problems of not next tomorrow. is unable to enjoy the, the grace of today. But do the children care? Even if there is no food in their school bag, in their, what do you call it, food pack, they will still enjoy that moment when the bell goes. You see why children are better than us? That's why Jesus Christ says, unless you make yourself like little children, you can't enter the kingdom of God. Now, that is it. We all deserve to have some moment of pure delight. My prayer is that we will be seeking it, that we will go down on our knees and ask the Lord occasionally to give us pure delight. So that we will know what heaven is like. Actually, this is the truth. Those who really live the Christian life, who struggle more to live the Christian life, are people who have had some experience, you know. It's called some spiritual experience. There are people who have had the grace of the Lord just showing them small. You see, the Lord will just open small like, make you see like this, then cover and back. They see you say, eh? They say, no, make you still go back to the world first. Now, when they see that kind of thing, they begin to desire. It fills human beings with desire profound desire those are the kind of things saint augustine saw when he says lord you have created us for yourself and our hearts are restless until they rest in you we need to have where we have wonderful encounter with god encounters with god where we have a glimpse of the promised land of heaven where we taste on it the glory of the world to come each one of us needs such moment to have a little taste of the glory to come you see when you come back from that mountain you look at all the year that people are doing that's the kind of experience that moses had when he spent 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness uh, in on, on mount sinai when he came you know what he saw he saw that his colleagues were worshiping idols and he just looked and said look, look at look at this ones look at this ones why because they have not been to the mountain top moses had been to the mountain top moses could not be part of their nonsense because moses had seen beyond the mountain 
my prayer is that we will each one of us make an effort to reach the mountain top and this is what the Lenten season is all about to take us now and again to the mountain top to have an encounter such a profound powerful encounter that even when we come back to earth the light of the mountain will enlighten our everyday life here to strengthen us for our everyday tasks to clothe the common things around with the radiance of, of the divine to enable us to face the crosses which may come our way we need these moments of encounter we can have our transfiguration experience but what is the obstacle sin is the obstacle on our ways s i n sin our concupiscences are an obstacle and what are concupiscences i've defined them here before one the lust of the flesh which leads to gluttony drunkenness fornication adultery pornography anything that is to gratify our flesh the lust of the flesh two the lust of the eyes the lust of the eyes anything which lead to avarice to greed to inordinate accumulation of money and wealth and houses and bribery and corruption fraud treasury looting just to get more money to get more clothes to get more shoes how many shoes did i made the marcos have eh? three thousand some people are trying here they are going near near that woman to have more more shoes more clothes more whatever anything that puts that kind of greed that kind of avarice in us is a loss of the because it means hey, your eyes see them your mind no feet come out from there is that not true loss of the eyes your eyes see them your mind no feet come out from there you must gather them then there is the pride of life these are called the concupiscences the third one is the pride of life which is responsible for pride and arrogance pride and arrogance that makes one person say me who are you to tell me that you do you know who i am and, and as he begins to do that what is happening adrenaline is being released more and more adrenaline is going into the system and the guys get more angry after some time something carries his hand that was like this and makes it like this and makes it like this and pride you see it has been demonstrated that you see you only get angry terribly angry like that against somebody that you think you are more powerful than why does the nanny not get angry occasionally with his ogre and do like this eh? does the ogre not annoy the nanny occasionally why does he not you see the thing is that when we have an illusion of power and pride i am more than him a hundred times who is he to say this to me whereas if you are humble the christian humility if we had it we won't get angry like that it would be difficult when somebody says you are an idiot you say ah me i have known that long ago you are not revealing anything to me <laughs> finish have you? he who is down this year no fall that's why humility this thing that christian the christianity teaches about humility now the solution to our problem so Dr. Njoku, you are an idiot. Then you respond, say, I have, eh? Have I, you have always known that. Hey, hey, no quarrel. You see? Pride leads to a lot of things. It leads to a lot of problems. It leads to violence. It leads to malice. It leads to anger. It leads to resentment. It leads to unforgiveness. It leads to greed for power. Pride also because you think now you be like that then you are the one who must rule you must rule you must control others pride makes you want to control others to dominate others then you become unjust against others it leads to oppression it leads to manipulation deceit election election malpractice rigging all kinds of things so these are the obstacles against our having divine experience Lent reminds us that we are citizens of heaven. Lent is a time to engage in prayer, in penance, in fasting, in mortification, in alms giving. Lent is the time. Lent is the time to run away from sin. To run away from sin. To conquer our concupiscences with the grace 
of God. Lent is a time to practice the virtues of and ethos of our heavenly homeland. If indeed we are citizens of heaven, Lent is a time to practice the virtues and ethos of heaven. And what are those virtues and ethos? One is fear of the Lord. Two is love. Then sacrifice. Then humility. Then generosity. Lent is a time to practice all this. Finally, once upon a time I read this poem to you. Uh, I wrote, I call it Light and Truth. It is related to the um, speech of Martin Luther King that I said you should read. I have been to the mountain top. I say here that I have been blessed with truth and I have been graced with light. I have seen the light. I can no longer act as if I have always been in darkness. I have seen the light. Martin Luther King says, I have been to the mountain top. I have gazed on the other side and it is so beautiful that I cannot come and mess around with you guys in this valley. I've been blessed, I've been blessed with the truth and I've been graced with light, these identical twins of reality that pride in eternity. Truth is axiomatic as light is magnetic. There is a compelling element in truth as there is a revealing force in light. To know truth is to be espoused to truth and infidelity to truth to detest all romans with lie. Even if you don't know the other big words, you should know that one, right? To know truth is to be espoused to truth. And infidelity to truth to which you have been espoused, to do what? To detest all romance with lie. Next, to encounter light like Peter and James and John encountered light on a mountain is to be charmed by that light. And in fascination with light to do what? To renounce all flirtation with darkness. Now, this to me is freedom. That I have known the truth and I can no longer lie gallantly. This, my friend, is liberty. That I have seen the light and I can no longer sin gloriously. Are we able to say those two last verses? Can we say it with faith? Let's read them. This to me is freedom that I have known the truth and I can no longer lie gallantly. Next, this, my friend, is liberty, that I have seen the light and I can no longer sin gloriously. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you, we glorify your holy name. We thank you for your love for us and your goodness. We thank you for the experience of the transfiguration that has been transmitted to us where we heard the voice of the father saying this is my son my beloved listen to him during this season of Lent give us the grace to constantly listen to your son give us the grace to appreciate your son as your beloved whom you have given to us to die and rise from the dead for us Lord we also pray during this Lent you will give us moments of divine encounter Give us our own transfiguration experience, Lord. Don't let us pass through this world without some encounter with you. Without having a taste of our heavenly homeland so as to constantly desire and hunger for it. Let each one of us, Lord, have our moments on the mountain. Moments of revelation of Christ's glory. Moments where we experience pure joy. So that every day in our lives, including days of darkness, including days of pain, that that light may make us succeed. That light may take us through the stormy weathers of this world. Through Christ our Lord. Now, scripture passages for our reflection. Now, you will see about the uh, mountain. On the mountain, Mount Sinai, the law was given by Moses. Elijah encountered God on the mount and received his consolation on Mount Horeb, 1 Kings 19. Jesus gives his new law, on, which is called the Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew chapter 5-7. to And the work of our salvation was completed on another mount. It's called Mount Calvary, in Luke chapter 23. And Peter, Peter never, never forgot the experience, the spectacular experience he had on, at the Transfiguration. See 2 Peter 
chapter 1 verse 17 to 18 he constantly recalls that experience and it energized the rest of his life god bless you